I'm Akshay Desai. I'm the director of the cardiomyopathy and heart failure program at Brigham Women's Hospital and one of the uh, uh, co-authors for the Cardia 2 study. So the Cardia 2 study is a uh, phase 2 trial of Zalbisaran, which is a novel approach to management of hypertension. It is a small interfering RNA therapeutic that targets hepatic angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen is one of the key precursor peptides in the renin-angiotensin system, and actually the sole precursor for all of the peptides. The principle is that by suppression of the message for generation of angiotensinogen, uh, there may be more complete suppression of the renin-angiotensin axis, uh, which we know is an effective strategy for managing patients with high blood pressure. Hypertension remains uh, an important cause of, and a leading cause of global morbidity and mortality. Uh, although we have a lot of effective oral therapies for hypertension, uh, epidemiologic data suggests that a s only a, a small fraction of patients maybe is, uh, are, are adequately controlled to guideline recommended targets. As many as 40% of patients even who are treated for hypertension may still be uncontrolled by our conventional guidelines. And that leaves a lot of residual risk for cardiovascular events because we know that for every proportionate rise uh, in blood pressure, there is a, high, a concomitant increase in the risk for cardiovascular death and stroke. So there is a need for, more, bet, for better control of hypertension in our population. One of the reasons that our current agents may be less effective in controlling therapy is that patients are prescribed a lot of pills. They don't always take the pills they're prescribed. And adherence to therapy we know is one of the contributing factors to inadequate blood pressure control. So a therapy that is administered parenterally or subcutaneously that has a long duration of action would have a lot of attraction as a therapy for hypertension because it would allow for infrequent dosing, maybe in a clinic setting, um, that might offer some advantages over other available therapies and approaches for hypertension management. So the design of CARDIA-2 uh, was a, uh, a prospective randomized trial that had a run-in phase and a, and a, and a double-blind treatment phase. The eligible patients for the study were patients with either uncontrolled hypertension or those with hypertension that was uncontrolled despite treatment with one or two medications. Patients who met those eligibility criteria were then randomly assigned to discontinue their medicines and initiate one of three background therapies, uh, indapamide two and a half milligrams, amlodipine five milligrams, and olmosartan 40 milligrams, representing three commonly used classes of antihypertensive drugs at adequate doses. After four weeks of the open label randomized background therapy period, patients meeting the criteria of, an, uh, of persistent elevation in blood pressure and adherence to the prescribed medications of more than 80% were then randomized again to treatment with zalbisarin 600 milligrams subcutaneously or placebo and followed for an additional three months until ascertainment of the primary endpoint uh, which was the change from baseline in, uh, in uh, systolic blood pressure measured by 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. And a number of key secondary endpoints were examined, including follow-on uh, uh, results at six months. But the key difference is that at three months, uh, uh, clinicians were encouraged to treat patients with additional medicines as indicated uh, to meet guideline recommended blood pressure targets. So the key primary endpoint was at three months and then follow-on assessment at six months in the context of add-on therapy. So the key findings of the CARDIA-2 study were that, uh, with, uh, that the treatment with zalbisarin compared with placebo was as seen in the pre predicate CARDIA-1 trial associated with significant suppression of uh, circulating angiotensinogen levels by two weeks. Uh, all zalbisarin-treated patients experienced more than 95% suppression of angiotensinogen, and that suppression endured out to six months. Uh, the, uh, in parallel with the reductions in plasma AGT, there were greater reductions in blood pressure in the zalbisarin treated patients compared with those treated with placebo on the, in each of the background treatment cohorts. Regardless of background therapy with endapamide, amlodipine, or olmosartan, there were statistically important reductions in blood pressure in patients assigned to zalbisarin compared to those assigned to placebo at three months measured by both ambulatory blood pressure monitoring and office blood pressure. The reductions in blood pressure were as much as 12 millimeters above endapamide, 
uh, 10 millimeters above amlodipine and four millimeters above olmosartan. And if one followed the patients out to six months in the context of add-on therapy in most cases, particularly in the endapamide and amlodipine groups, those differences persisted even if they were slightly attenuated. Right, so these are phase two studies that largely demonstrate the proof that zalbestrin uh, is an effective treatment uh, for lowering blood pressure. The other thing I should mention is that these early trials are critically important for understanding the safety of the medication. And so far, although there were higher rates of adverse events, including mild hyperkalemia, hypotension, and uh, mild worsening of renal function, most of those events were transient. There were no deaths, no, uh, uh, only two cardiovascular hospitalizations, and no signals of harm. Of course, uh, and we could certainly need larger duration experience of longer exposure uh, to understand uh, safety in a long-term application. But I think the clinical exp uh, implications are largely that this seems to be more evidence that zalbestrin may be an effective therapy uh, for management of hypertension that may add uh, to the efficacy of standard therapies. Uh, we'll, we need more data in higher risk populations and uh, coming soon will be a third trial called CARDIA-3 that will enroll a higher risk patient population, including patients with more advanced kidney, chronic kidney disease who are not enrolled in the current trial and patients at high cardiovascular risk uh, in a more resistant hypertension population that would uh, be an area where more therapy is needed. That study will answer principally the question of whether uh, in a higher uh, population at high cardiovascular risk or with more advanced CKD, what is the efficacy and safety of zalbestrin? Uh, that trial will randomize patients to a variety of doses, so it will help us find whether there is a need for dose adjustment in that population to find the right balance of efficacy and safety, and um, also help us secure the safety of this approach in a population that may be more prone to uh, hyperkalemia or worsening renal function because of baseline kidney dysfunction. And I think with the totality of the data from the CARDIA program, uh, we hope then to inform uh, whether uh, there's a path uh, for a phase three uh, exploration of this concept as a novel approach to treatment of hypertension. But it's exciting times because I think these are uh, the, the opportunity, if we can demonstrate efficacy and safety of this approach, the idea of treating hypertension with a drug that's administered only twice a year uh, would be quite an innovation over currently available therapies.